Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number three of the uh, 1957 Revell Cadillac Eldorado Brome. Well, it doesn't look like a whole lot got done, but I'll tell you what, wait till I start bringing things in. So let's get these guys out of the way here and get into this. So let's talk about the body. First off, it is one piece glued up the other day and it glued up really nice look at the seam lines in here beautiful 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 but the more i look at it <laughs> the more body work i see so i filled in a few more uh came across the back some more um sanded down a bunch of them to get them nice and smooth but it is not ready for paint yet i think i got at least one more day probably two before this thing will be sanded down and, and filled up enough to where uh, I'll let it go into paint. But it glued together real nice, real nice. And what I did is I put rubber bands around it like I showed you before and made sure they were nice and tight. And then I just came in starting here and did a couple of drops and watched it do the capillary line I did right here and it ran all the way down to this dot. I brought it and I just watched that glue run from here around all the way around. Just kept touching it in different places. Now, if you look right here where this is, um, that glue grabbed a hold of that rubber band and ran up the rubber band a little bit. Um, no biggie, just had to sand it off. Uh, it's not like I'm not doing a whole bunch of sanding on here anyhow. It was just one more thing. But we are making huge progress. I'm, I'm uh, like I said, I'm thinking maybe a couple more days before I can get this thing um, ready to paint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it black again. So the whole thing is black. And then we'll, we'll do our mix uh, maybe two days, three days after that with our um, silver and blue. So do, do, do. I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna bring in a few things that you're gonna think, what in the heck? First off, we'll start with Mr. and Mrs. El Dorado. As you see, they are now in uh, titanium silver. There's a reason for my madness here. I'll bring in a few other things that are titanium silver, and then we'll talk about it. Really, all the body, or all the interior, got titanium silvered, including the uh, carpet. Now, why would I have painted it silver like this and uh, instead of primer? is because I've had a bunch of problems with my primers lately balling up and uh, just messing up. And I've found that uh, Tamiya paints, if you just spray them straight onto the plastic, they work great. So I've, I haven't primed like, I think the last three models I've built, I've just gone straight to the, well, the last time the fly ended up getting on my paint um, that was the Skyliner kit, and that one was primed, and remember all the problems I had with it. So I'm using the silver as a, as a base coat for the sky blue, because I want to darken this up just a smidge, so I didn't, but black would have been too dark, white would have been too white, and I didn't want to go flat, um, like a flat gray or anything like that just because I, I want to keep it a little bit where I can buff it and make something shiny, um, like vinyl, like the seats. I don't want them flat. The carpet, I do want flat. I can, I can change that with quick shine and a little bit of to the Tamiya's um, X21 flat base. But I found that if I go with the silver, I can really do a lot better work with the colors. So that's the whole reason why I did that. And on the on the people, 
I could have done any color. Really, I was thinking about doing gray, but um, again, the silver really highlights the details and I can get in there and I can start brush painting um, like her face and her hair and, and things like that. Um, I'm not gonna try to mask this off. Her whole dress is going to be brush painted. But if you look now, you can see on her back and everything and her hair, there is some great detail. Look at her neck and her face. So all that detail just popped with the silver and now I can see it. And, and that's the big thing. When I do flat, it seems like I can't see um, detail work as well. And I can't, and I'm fighting my brush. With this, I'm not. So, I mean, look at his cummerbund pops, his little boot near now, you can see real well. His face, he's even smiling. Um, that work we did on his hair really paid off. I think it looks really good. You know, and then the seams coming down where I went over it, that did a lot. It hit him very well. Same with hers. Her dress, the seams disappeared. Um, I dug in pretty deep to do that, but I think it was worth it. So um, while we're talking about that, and I also painted the hood or the roof, the titanium silver. And I think that looks really well. This It had a, a, a stainless steel top, and I think that looks really good for the stainless steel top. And when I was painting this, I used my GHAC 98D, the gallery, the two series. I used it with the 0.38 millimeter um, needle in it. And I'm telling you, this is the best um, airbrush I've ever used, ever. It, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not even kidding around. I know I'm gonna admit they sent this to me and said try it out and and do videos and things like that. But I'm telling you, this is an update, and I'm just telling everybody that's following my updates. If you got the money to get a, and you're looking for a good airbrush, I I wouldn't think anything else would do any better than this and i've used some pretty dang good airbrushes and i'm telling you just the feel in my hand and the way that thing came around that new uh nozzle that they have it, it sprayed so smooth it went down just effortless you know just and it was perfect i also painted um the chrome trim with um, X11 chrome silver. I will use bare metal foil up across the top here um, because I want that to be really, really chromey. But the rest of this, I wanted it to look like that um, muted chrome. And I've seen it in a couple of videos where um, this part right here comes out and it really stands out but the part on the body is is muted but dang it man i just i, I moved the body and now i can't figure out where i put it <laughs> there it is i wanted to put it up against it just to say wow but that's gonna be so nice on there especially with the blue you know that's gonna look great with the blue and again that uh the Tammy airbrush, or Tammy airbrush, the uh, gallery airbrush painted this Tamiya paint um, nicer than I've ever had anything paint Tamiya paint for me. And Tamiya paint's pretty forgiving, I admit, but just dang it, it was nice. It was real nice, and I'm I'm not just saying that. I uh, I'm I'm I would never just say that. Look at that. I mean, I haven't touched anything. It just laid down there perfectly the spray pattern was so nice but let's move on i mean toot toot i'm blowing their horn because they deserve it they really do deserve it but i want to move on and get this going i don't want to keep you very long here tonight i just wanted to give you a quick yeah i'm still working on an update 
I sprayed the, the wheels, the uh, rubber black, uh, XF85, rubber black. Best color, if you want a color in your arsenal, um, I use this for so many things. I started using it on tires with my old models like my Gamma Goat and things like that. And look up Gamma Goat, U.S. Army Gamma Goat, or Marine Gamma Goat. That is a heck of a kit. <laughs> but I started using it on those and doing tires. It's the perfect color. Now I will come in um, and I'll, I will flood this with white. I'll do a first couple of passes with flat and then I'll come back with, uh, with gloss white to really give it a nice look. But that'll be three or four days. I really want that to dry hard um, before I do. But again, no primer, just straight over the top. Um, I've, like I said, I've been having really, really, really good luck. This came out great. I'm happy with that. So, and think about one, I, you know, this is just, and I got a couple of pieces of dust on it, but this is just laid on there. I will come back and polish this um, with the Tamiya's polish and smooth every, that'll smooth everything out. And then I'll put quick shine over it. But I want to, I want to, uh, I want to get this to where it's smooth first. Because like I said, it's stainless steel. It needs to be good. The inside I am going to do um, black, I think. I'll have to look some more. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to just do black just because it's going to be underneath and I don't want to have it overpower the blue that I'm going to do on the interior. So there's that. And we're moving quick today. Um, I wanted to sh bring these back out because I used the quick shine over top of the uh, backup lights. And I told you that I would bring you back when I showed or when I did that. And now, if you look at that, it literally looks like clear white glass. You know, I, I, I it's just such a simple way to do it. But I've done that to where I've used this on those, those all white, and I probably should have done it with the front here too, with the turn signals, but I wanted these to be orange just to show that they were turn signals. But you could even do that with those if you wanted. But I mean, look at how nice that looks. There we go. It looks clear. And that's just the uh, panel liner and then one dot drop of quick shine right on the top let it flow don't touch it let it dry and it's done and i guarantee you, a lot of people will be like how did you do that well it isn't that hard it's just it was a uh let's try it moment and it worked but anyhow this is a quick one like i said i just wanted to show you where i was before we go blue um at the end here, I took a bunch of like an hour's worth of airbrush videos and I'll throw those on the end. I'll tag along. Um, I had the fan running because there's no way I'm going to paint for an hour without my fan running. So you really can't hear anything. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, shut the sound off of it and do a little dub over just to tell you what my thoughts were as I went. But love that airbrush. Seriously, that's it. <laughs> But anyhow, I am Mark. This is Grandpa Mark's Hobbies. Got you 15 minutes worth of build update and probably three days. Um, once all this stuff dries, I'll get back in the spray booth and we'll put some blue on everything. Hopefully, we'll get the, the body into black by then too. So we're looking for maybe the middle of next week getting this done. I think that's, that's doable as long as everything keeps rolling the way it does. And I don't, now that I talk so well about the airbrush, I don't flub the paint. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be ironic, huh? But anyhow, I am Mark. This is Grandpa Mark's Hobbies. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Okay, we're using titanium silver to start with. And I was really surprised when I was squirting this out into the cup that it was pretty dang thin. 
I know brushing it, it, it seemed thin, but I didn't realize it was this thin. So I mixed it up and checked it, and sure enough, I think this was, or I figured this was good enough to paint. So we'll put a little bit in the airbrush, just a couple drops, see what it looks like. Put the cap on, and I tested it already. This is coming in after I tested it. It did spray nice, so right now I'm just kind of giving a real light, getting a feeling for the airbrush. I'm hardly pulling back on the throttle at all, as you can see. And as you, when we get to the next one, you'll really be able to see. But the, it felt really good and uh, you can see here now I'm I'm just trying to fill the lines because I moved a little fast and a little light so and then I realized I was out of frame almost but look at how clean that sprayed right now I'm starting to get a little confident with it and thinking okay this is pretty good. Now that line that you see me go over right there, that's actually kind of a mold line. It came back when the paint dried. So that wasn't something I missed when I did it. Now we're doing the next one. I'm going to blow it off, check to make sure I have enough paint, which I sure do. I put a ton in there. I'm doing my edges. I always do my edges first. Come around and now you'll see that I'm not as shy about pulling the trigger back as I was the first time. Now this is the first time I've used this airbrush and right about now is when I fell in love with it. Uh, I got the other ones that that Gallery has sent me and they're very nice but for doing uh, spray work like this this will probably be my go-to. Now here's where I'm spraying Mr. El Dorado, and like I said in the other video, I'm doing this not only to um, make it to where I can put a different color on there the, over the black. Uh, the, the silver seems to mask the black very well, so you don't have to struggle and everything's dark. But what it also does is it highlights everything so that I can see all the detail painting that I have to do and uh, you're not guessing when you bring your brush down to it with the color paint it uh, you can see the tip of your brush in the silver so that's why I use the silver on this instead of gray because gray kinda washes out a lot of that detail that the silver shows up in the in the light And by the way, it's pumpkin spice season, so I'm having a coffee with while we're talking here. I'm pretty happy with that one, so it's Mrs. Alderado's turn to get sprayed. And start with the back and just work my way up. And I'm just slapping it on. This is a base coat. Um, I know this chrome silver, or this titanium uh, silver lays down really nice. That dang extra... Uh, paper clip paper clip clothespin was getting in the way but see this goes quick and you can see all the highlights just jumping out now there's a lot of detail uh, on these two figures that you didn't even see in the in the black same with with uh, when they're molded in white it just seems to disappear so I always like to do a base coat of like I said, either gray or a silver when I'm doing figures to start. And now I will come back. Uh, I might mask her off and spray her dress. Um, we'll find out. Now it's time to do the seats. And I'm just giving one coat on these just to uh, make it to where that blue will show up. Because if I don't do this, that sky blue will look dark blue. 
but now that I do this, I can uh, mask off the edges and then paint the, the seat itself and I'll already have the, uh, the edges painted. Here's the front seat and it went just as quick as the back one. Really simple to do. The uh, airbrush is flowing really nice. Um, like I said, I didn't even have to mix this, so there's no retarder in this at all. And it, it's still laying down nice. But uh, my air is set at about 20 PSI. And uh, this brush seems like it likes that. I started out when I was doing a couple of test shots with things. <coughs> At the beginning, you can see over on the side there that little, uh, uh, the, the other chassis for the dart. When I was tested on that, it was with the titanium silver before I got into the door panel. And, uh, I was running a little low. I was at 18, and it just, it didn't spray it as nice as I wanted it. Turned it up just a little bit, and it, it was dead on. Nice. So now we're doing the dash because this is going to be blue too and uh, I almost wish I could I could leave it this color because it's, it's really looking sharp but look at all the details and how they pop on there um, when you spray that stuff that was hidden in that black just sure jumps out and now here's I'm doing the roof with the titanium silver because these roofs were uh, stainless steel and I think the titanium silver is going to be pretty much the perfect match for titanium or for the uh, stainless steel and uh, once I get a, the second coat on it you'll see um, I'm happy with what I chose I, I was thinking about doing the chrome silver I was thinking about doing flat aluminum and then polishing it but I'm, I'm going to do this uh, just leave the titanium silver on here uh, I'll do a wet sanding uh, I'll, I'll sand it again after the second coat dries I'll give it a day or so and then I'll, I'll hit it one more time and then I'll polish it but I'm not gonna polish it to a high shine I'm just gonna polish it to smooth everything out really good and you can see I'm horrible at, at spraying large objects it looks like a zebra but second coat uh, comes in and it made it look nice here we go with the second coat I'm blowing it off with just air right now and now we're gonna get serious and I'm gonna lay it on a lot heavier than I did the first coat Let's smooth everything out and look at how nice that pattern is on there that uh, needle or the jet the way they have it uh, with the eight lines on there you know you can talk about gimmicky stuff but the proofs in the pudding there look at how nice that laid down now we're switching over to rubber black and I'm going to show you how I did I'll only do two of the tires here but I'll show you the way I held them is with these uh, clothes pins backwards and I squeeze them put them in there and then open them up and they they don't open all the way to close where this closed bin closes so there's still tension on there and it holds it real nice and it's out of the way where when everything gets put together there won't be any marks right now I'm just blowing the dust off and here we're giving it the coat of uh, tight uh, Tamiya's rubber black these uh, old plastic tires this was pretty much what I started out with back in the day so I'm used to them and, and a lot of the military uh, models I've done my gamma goat like I said before check that uh, check that model out but they had the plastic tires and here's the second one I just figured that went quick and I'll show you one more time um, it it sprayed it really nice and smooth no problems and this this thing even it cleaned real nice in between in between coats I I filmed for over an hour and figured you you don't want to see me clean the brush 
uh, every single time I use it, but I did want to show you how I'm holding things and how nice this, since this is the first time I've used it, I wanted to show everybody. It did a great job. Now the last thing I'm doing is a little bit of chrome silver. This is going to be for the uh, the back trim pieces. So I'm not going to need a whole lot of it, but when I took it out of the out of the jar, this jar is pretty old. That came out almost like maple syrup, <laughs> or like not maple syrup, but Aunt Jemima syrup. It came out pretty thick. So I'm going to add a little bit of retarder to it, just a couple of drops, and uh, I think that was four drops. I hate that little white gasket, never stuck to the lid from day one, so I'm always messing with that. But uh, I added four drops, and then I'm going to thoroughly mix that, just to make sure that the retarder is really well mixed in there before I even add any thinner. And uh, you can see I'm not using primer on anything. Ever since I had the uh, problem with the Vallejo not playing nicely with my Tamiya paint, I uh, just started using straight Tamiya paint on the plastic. It dries hard. It dries. Uh, it sticks very well. It doesn't scratch off at all. So I'm just skipping the primer for now. Um, that's why I use the silver on Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado and on everything else is because I, I didn't want to use the primer. I wanted to just use the Tamiya paint and I thought that's the, uh, titanium silver would be the best bet for that. Now I'm getting real close. You can see I, I like to suck that up into the pipette several times just to make sure that I get the paint off of the inside of the pipette too. And uh, so you don't have any surprises when you take it out of the cup and put it in, or take it out of the shot glass and put it into the cup. You don't thicken it up a little bit. This way it's all mixed evenly. Now there we go. We're looking for a little tiny bit thicker than water. Um, everybody says milk. Well, to me, milk looks like water. So I just go a little bit thicker than water. Put a little bit in. I'm not going to need a whole lot. I actually mixed up like twice as much. And now I'm messing up here because I wasn't even thinking. Everything started closing in and I'm out of the frame a little bit. But if you can look at the, the airbrush itself, you can really see that pattern coming out of it nicely. Now I'm looking at it saying, wow. <laughs> okay, I just couldn't stand it anymore. I had to move this stuff out of the way. And if you look, I didn't put the lid on the uh, thinner. So I hope I don't have a bunch of silver flake in there from uh, any overspray. But look at how nice that lays down. It's just smooth as silk. I had no problems whatsoever. Um other than me being afraid to pull the hammer back a little bit and let the paint fly. But I'm looking at it. I'm really happy with it. So I'm thinking one coat will be good enough for these because I am in a bare metal foil. Uh, just a little bit of it on the top. There's a, a pronounced piece of trim uh, that'll show up. So I'm going to bare metal foil that, and then I'll leave this to silver, and I think that's going to be perfect for the part. Now I'm really enjoying this. It's going down smooth. I'm looking at uh, how well it's covering over that black that uh, chrome silver just does a great job on everything. If I had enough of it, I would have used this for... Uh, the seats and everything. I just didn't have enough of it, so I had to go with the uh, the titanium silver for doing the seats and all. But you can see that lays down and uh, just perfectly. But there we go. I'm going to let you go with that. 
Thanks for watching, and you guys all have a great night and a better tomorrow.